Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about equilibrium solutions to the heat equation. Now let's recall the heat equation. So the heat equation is the partial derivative of u with respect to time, where u is temperature in a, in, in a 1D domain. Okay, and that could be like a metal a metal rod. Okay. Uh, and we have, that's going to be equal to D times the partial derivative, second partial derivative with respect to space, plus 1 over C times rho times R, where D is that parameter which we call, the, it's, it's consists of the conductivity parameter for the material, divided by C times rho, which is the specific heat and the mass density of the material, the, of the rod we're interested in, okay? R, of course, is that source density. The source density of heat. Um, and so this is our diffusion equation right here, okay? So in this video, we're really going to be focused on equilibrium. So that means, of course, that the time derivative is going to be set equal to zero. All right, so that means that we're going to have... Like this, our equation is simply going to be that equation right there. And notice this is no longer a PDE. Instead, it's an ODE. Ah, but, of course, we have to have a domain. Our rod runs from zero all the way up to L. Okay, L could be, so of course we have a rod like that. And it starts at X equals zero. And it goes to X equals L. All right, um, and of course, in, uh, this is an ordinary differential equation, but we're going to also need boundary conditions. Okay, we know from a previous video there are three different types. There are a uh, fixed temperature, and there are uh, um, uh, zero flux. And there are, of course, what we call mixed, where there's a little bit of each. All right. Uh, and of course, uh, there's also sources R. And that, that's another thing that we, we want to be interested in, is basically, how do we find an equilibrium temperature st distribution? So the question is of this, of course, you know, can we find... a distribution of temperature okay there's there's no there's no time we're not looking at a temporally changing system can we find a temperature distribution given uh boundary conditions plus the source plus r okay so that's our big question let's now start with a specific example Okay, we're going to talk about, we'll set everything, uh, we'll make this problem as simple as possible. We'll just talk about um, uh, D being 1, uh, and C times rho is also going to be 1, and we'll say that uh, uh, R is equal to 0 as well. Okay, again, this is simple. Okay, I want to do a first simple example, and our domain Let's say this is also going to be, we'll, we'll leave this, we'll call it 0 to L. Okay, we'll make L just a fixed parameter. We won't give it a specific time. And our boundary conditions, we're going to go with fixed temperature. And we're going to say that at U at 0, it's going to be T0. And U at L, it's going to be TL. All right, so the question is, what does U of X look like? What does the temperature distribution through the rod, given that at the temperature is T0 on this side and TL at the other side? 
what what's the temperature in between? Will it go up and down? Will there will it do something strange? Uh, what what could it possibly be? All right. Well, let's see if we can find it. And again, the solution. It, all it involves is just using basic calculus. It's just using basic calculus. So let's find our 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 our, our differential equation. Then is of course uh, the second partial derivative of u with respect to x uh, plus uh, zero for sources is equal to zero, which is going to be the time derivative of u with respect to t. So another way to write this a little bit simpler is u double prime is equal to zero. All right. Well, now let's go through the process of finding u. Of course, we're going to uh, integrate. Okay. So if I take the, the antiderivative, I'll get u prime coming out of it, right? Of course, that'll be plus c, right? Because anytime we uh, have a, a problem, uh, where anytime we take an uh, antiderivative, we have to remember that the antiderivative is 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 non-unique. It's always up to some unknown additive constant. So we'll call it, but we're going to call this one c1. All right. And then, of course, I'm going to integrate one more time. Because, again, what I want to get, I want to find u. So here it is. u of x is there. And we integrate it. And, of course, we're going to get c1x plus c2. Yet another additive integrative integration constant. So there's our solution. The, so this is what I call the general solution. Okay, to find the particular, what I'm going to do, of course, is use the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions, they state that u at 0 is equal to t naught, which is equal to c1 times 0 plus c2. That implies, of course, that c2 is equal to t naught. Cool. All right. The next one says that u at l is equal to t l, which is equal to c1 times l plus c2. But we know that c2 is actually t naught, so we'll just put that in there. So now we have an equation we can solve for to find C1. Um, so then that becomes uh, that becomes C1 times L is equal to T L minus T naught. Okay, so C1 is going to be equal to T L minus T naught all over L. Okay. Right, so that's my C1. Let's put this all together. U of X, our equilibrium temperature distribution is going to be T L minus T naught all over L times X plus T naught. All right, and that does actually satisfy the boundary conditions. Uh, notice what this is. This is basically, of course, the slope. Uh, uh, this is a linear equation. These are linear equations here, right? And that's, of course, the slope. And we see that it's equal to basically the change in the temperature over the length of the rod. That's another way to write our solution. Okay. So with this, I think it's worth just going over here and getting a plot. Here's the solution. So uh, without using any numbers, I can just say that if T0 is down there, and here's X, and you go over to TL, and let's say that TL is here, what we said basically is that we have a line in between. So the equilibrium temperature is a line connecting T0 to TL. 
And I think this is intuitive that, again, if you think about a heat, heat equation, if I'm trying to find an equilibrium heat equation, uh, that of course means that uh, 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 this is the temperature that the, the rod should settle down to if one end of the rod is kept at the temperature T0 and the other is kept at the temperature TL. You'd expect that through the rod, there would be a gradual change in temperature it would be a steady, a steady change of temperature between the two. So you'd get a linear function connecting those two temperatures like that. So this should be fairly intuitive. All right, so now let's talk about another problem that we can do. Uh, and now this one we're going to actually, we're going to say this is going to be, now we're going to look, consider a source. Okay, so R, in this case, we're going to now set it to one. So we're basically pumping heat into the rod uniformly. Uniformly. So one way to think about this, but before we really get a picture, my boundary conditions, we're going to go with zero temperature. We're going to go with zero temperature boundary conditions. So u at zero is equal to uh, zero, and u at l is equal to zero. But, <coughs> uh, excuse me, if l, I'm going to actually set l equal to something. I'll just set it equal to, let's go with two. All right. Um, now we're on this rod. And it's going from zero all the way to two. And we have a uniform heat source. One way to actually uh, represent that, I like to think of it as you just sort of lit the grill underneath. And you have a uniform heat being pumped in. And these are flames, right? Flames that you're, uh, uh, you're, you're piping on. Here's your flames. I don't know if that's a good drawing of flames, but the idea is that you're pumping this heat into the thing. All right, but on the ends, you you have the thing set at zero, zero C, okay, on each end. So the question is, where is the rod going to be the hottest? So, Uh, so where is the rod going to be hottest? So again, I'm, what I'm asking for here is just an, an intuition. I have the rod at both ends of the of the of the thing set to zero. They will always be zero. So they are they're fixed temperature boundary conditions. But then we're lighting this. We're we're pumping this heat into the system. So clearly, you'd expect that as heat goes in, the heat is going to eventually travel out the ends like that like that All right but it should be that basically in the middle it should be the hottest okay so let's actually see if we can figure this one out again just like before let's keep it simple we'll set d equal to one and c rho equal to one and again we're just trying to keep this as simple as possible and what we get is the following, our, our DE looks like this, U double prime plus one is equal to zero. So that's our differential equation. I like to always set it up this way. And now what I'm gonna do is integrate it as follows. You get U prime coming out, and that's gonna be equal to minus one X plus C1, and now I integrate again. I'm going to get U of X, and I'm going to get minus X squared over 2 plus C1 X plus C2. So right there, this is my general solution. That's my general solution. Now, of course, is to find the use the boundary conditions to find 
the full solution to determine what C1 and C2 are. Okay, so u at 0 is of course equal to 0. We plug that in. We get 0 over 2 squared plus C1 times 0 plus C2 is equal to 0. That of course implies that C2 has to equal 0. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to move this over a little bit, just give myself a little bit more space. Now I'm going to come up here. We have u at 2 is equal to 0. Well, we plug that in, it's going to be u at 2 is equal to 2 squared over 2, that's a negative there, right? Plus c1 times 2 is equal to 0. All right. So we should be able to find this pretty uh, straight away. This implies, of course, that C1 times 2 is equal to 2 squared over 2. Um, that clearly looks like C1 is equal to 1. Okay, so let's put this all together then. We have U of X. The equilibrium solution to our temperature is going to be negative X squared over 2 plus x. So that's my final answer, but I think it's worth looking at this answer and seeing if we can figure out, does it confirm our intuition? If I look at my rod here, it should be that the maximum should be right in the middle of the rod. Let's look at the graph of this. What I like to actually do is factor out an x, uh, and then we're going to get 1 minus x over 2. I might even actually... Um, uh, uh, it might be worth actually pulling out that one half. So if I pull out that one half, of course, I'm going to get two minus X. All right. So that's a, maybe a slightly better way to look at the solution. Clearly the roots are going to be x equals 0 and x equals 2. Of course, this, 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 this ensures our boundary conditions, what we wanted. We wanted the boundary conditions to be 0. So that's, of course, our, our answer is actually providing us with that. So we've confirmed that. But the next thing we want to do is look at the graph of this. This is, of course, a parabola. And it's a downward-facing parabola. So what does u look like? What does the graph look like? It looks like this. Right, its maximum should be right at x equals 1 in the middle. And to see this, of course, it's straight away, all you have to do is find that, that maximum point is take the derivative. And we're going to get negative x plus 1 equal to 0. That implies x has to equal 1. All right, so uh, that's just an example. Where the slope is zero, it's right in the middle like that. Okay, so I think that confirms how these things will work. Uh, you'll have many other homework problems and, and the homework assignments that you're going to find that will do many, mother, many, many other examples of various heat equation equilibrium problems. They all involve basic calculus and uh, building your intuition for solving these problems. I think it's really important that we do check out and actually observe what the solutions look like. Do they confirm our intuition and things like that? All right. Thank you very much.